Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to restore this Sinclair ZX Spectrum. It's being sold on eBay and all proceeds are going to a local cancer charity. Now I've previously restored a couple of Spectrums, both a 48k model like this and the later Spectrum Plus, and I've put a link above to that video. Ok, so looking at the overall condition of the machine, it's in a pretty grubby state. There are a number of stickers on the case, it's quite dusty, and the metal faceplate with the rainbow is a bit scratched, so I'll be replacing that along with some other essential upgrades. Ok, so off with the lid, and we can see this is an issue 3B Spectrum board, and this was the most numerous produced. A key part of the Spectrum is a chip called the ULA, and here we can see we've got a 6C version. This has a lower power consumption than the earlier 5C, which is a good thing as heat buildup can be a problem in these machines. And from the date codes on the various components and ICs, this machine was likely built in early 1984. And here's the edge connector, which is used to connect devices like joystick interfaces, or devices for loading games from an SD card that have come along more recently. It's in reasonable condition and just needs a light clean. Looking at the rear of the board, I can see that it hasn't had any repairs or modifications made. Throughout the restoration, I'll be wearing an anti-static wrist strap, so as not to risk damage to any of the chips. I'll start by giving the board a quick clean up with an air duster, alcohol and some anti-static brushes. Before powering up an old Spectrum, it's advisable to do some checks around the board for apparent resistance. This allows you to see if there's any problems with the power supply, or faulty ICs that may be dragging the power supply down. I check the resistance across the voltage regulator, and across the various voltage rails that feed the lower RAM chips. Next, some diode checks across two of the transistors in the power supply. If the power supply has failed, it can have a cascade effect and knock out the RAM, or vice versa. Finally, I checked that there were no shorts around the transformer. There are 11 electrolytic capacitors on the board, and these can dry out over time, especially if there's been heat buildup inside the computer, and as we've already said, the ventilation in this machine isn't particularly good. I can check the health of the capacitors using my ESR meter. A low reading is good. Now this cap is showing quite a low compare on the scale, so that capacitor has definitely aged. That one's OK. And the next one, it's quite a high compare, but this is a low value capacitor, only one microfarad, and the ESR does vary depending on the size of the capacitor. The idea with compare is that you get a new capacitor out of the same value and compare the result to determine if it's bad. Most of the caps are OK, but as they're only a few pence each, I'll be replacing them all. And with all those checks successfully passed, I can power up the spectrum. I'm using a bench power supply which I've set to 9 volts and I've set the current limit to about 750 milliamps. As you can see the machine is drawing just over 600 milliamps so all appears to be well. With the machine powered I can check the voltage rails around the board. Probing around the lower RAM chips which use all four power rails we can see the minus 5 volt rail is present and correct. Plus 12 volts, slightly over, but that's normal. On this pin we get the plus 5 volt rail, so that's looking pretty good. And a check with a TV attached. And it starts up OK with the Sinclair copyright message. For the next step, I'm going to run some diagnostics using this device called a Smart Card from Retrolium. This also allows you to load games from a micro SD card. This connects to the Spectrum's edge connector, which could do with a clean with my fiberglass pencil. And while I'm here, I'm cleaning the board with a Q-tip and alcohol to remove some remaining dirt. With the smart card connected and a switch set on the back, it boots into the diagnostic ROM and starts running a memory test. Firstly it checks the lower 16k of RAM, and this passes OK. It then moves on to test the upper 32k of RAM, 
and there's a bit of a problem and it suggests IC21 is suspect. Going into one of the other test menus we get this visual indication of what's going on in the upper RAM. If I press the 1 key the RAM should be filled with all zeros and this would show blue pixels in the grid on the left. As you can see we've got some white pixels showing some RAM locations are reading back a 1. This is another indication that we've got a faulty RAM IC. Each RAM chip stores one bit in the 8-bit word. Here are our upper RAM ICs and this is our suspect chip IC21. I've ordered up some replacement RAM but in the meantime I can get on with some other jobs. As I've already said, heat buildup in the spectrum is a problem. Some of the heat is generated by this voltage regulator. This takes in 9 volts from the external power brick and creates a smooth 5 volt rail for the machine. However, it dumps the excess energy as heat into this metal plate. You can take that off and use a better, more modern solution which is in this silver bag. This is a DC to DC converter and it's got a little IC on the bottom of the board and an inductor on the top. It's a much more efficient switching device and doesn't require a heatsink or generate much heat. With the soldering station up to temperature, let's try and remove the old regulator. There we go, that's the old one off and pop the new one in. And with a new device in place we can see that the spectrum is consuming far less power. Previously it was using about 640 milliamps and that's reduced to around 400 milliamps. The ULA is an important device in the spectrum. It's a custom chip designed by Sinclair and isn't readily available. It runs a little bit hot and so to keep it cool and prolong its life I'm going to add a stick on heatsink. However space is limited inside the spectrum so in order to fit the heatsink I first need to remove the socket which the ULA sits in and solder the ULA directly to the board. First of all extracting the ULA very carefully with a screwdriver and putting it to one side. So here we are a couple of days later and some new RAM has arrived. IC21 is this one here. And first of all I'm just going to add some fresh solder to the contacts which should promote better desoldering. For good measure I'm applying some flux. I quite like these flux pens just to dispense a small amount onto the board. I can just check that each of those legs is free and it is, I can see the chip is moving so we can gently, very gently try and lift it up. Be very careful not to damage any tracks that may be underneath the chip with the screwdriver. Oh, there she is. So 
So time to fire up the Spectrum with its new RAM chip. As expected the lower RAM checks out OK and it moves on to test the upper RAM. And that's a pass, so the new RAM is working OK. Back in the upper RAM test menu, we can fill the upper RAM with zeros and we see a different pattern to before. It's all blue as expected. On to the next job which is to recap the board. And rather than desoldering, which we've already seen, I am going to use a different technique here and this involves cutting the capacitors off the board. The capacitor legs were originally cut at an angle and uh, this makes desoldering more difficult and I don't want to damage the board or lift any of the pads so I just cut off the capacitors then just remove the remaining part of the leg with the soldering iron and some tweezers. Now I can tidy up the holes with the desoldering tool. Then it's just a case of threading in the new capacitors, soldering them into place and snipping off the legs. Now the picture from the RF aerial connector isn't the sharpest, in fact you can see some interference on there and televisions that take this old analog RF signal are few and far between these days. However you can still buy TVs with a composite video input and luckily there's a very simple modification that can be made to the spectrum to convert the RF connector to instead output composite video. Just need to remove the lid on the RF modulator can Desolder then push two leads out of the way. Then insert a single capacitor between the PCB and the tip of the video output connector inside the can. And solder into place. Now I can use a normal phono cable to connect to the video input on my TV. You can see the image is a little dark so another modification is required to boost the signal level. This is done by replacing two transistors on the motherboard. and the image is a lot brighter. And there you go, the Spectrum board is fully repaired with some new essential modifications. So time to turn my attention to the case. There are some old stickers and the faceplate is a bit grubby and scratched. The key mat is also worn and some lettering has rubbed off. It's a simple matter of just peeling off the faceplate on this Spectrum. Earlier models had some catches on the inside. Then you can remove the key mat. Followed by the membrane which I will also replace. This makes an electrical contact when a key is depressed. Label remover spray should make light work of this sticker. Just leave it on for a few minutes, then the label should peel off easily. On the rear the same spray was used, but the dried up masking tape took a few goes to shift.
Finally, a gentle scrub in warm water with some detergent and a brush. Being careful around the white lettering. Once the case has dried off, I inserted a new keyboard membrane. Followed by a brand new key mat. And removed the adhesive backing on the new faceplate, which I then carefully rubbed down on the case. I stuck on four new rubber feet. and mounted the PCB back into the case, where it's fixed in with a single screw. In go the ribbon cables for the keyboard, and the case can be screwed back together. And with the Spectrum now complete, I think you'll agree it's looking in great shape. As a finishing touch, I treated this Spectrum to a new power supply. This is a high quality unit from the future was 8-bit. And now for a few final checks. The smart card allows you to check that all the keys work. The loudspeaker is working. The ROM is OK, and the multiplexer ICs check out OK too. And now for the fun stuff, I'm using a div MMC Future to load in some games from an SD card. Firstly, a bit of Chucky Egg, probably my favourite game. And then a few rounds of 1942 using the joystick. And finally, a bit of Dizzy. Quite a difficult game. And I've had the Spectrum on soap test for 24 hours and also loaded in games successfully from cassette tape. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you're in the market for an original Sinclair Spectrum in great refurbished condition, as you've just seen, then why not make a bid on the eBay auction? All proceeds are going to charity. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye for now.